let's go back to the beginning. E, mm -hmm. you I mean, everybody knows you as a Miami fixture. You right. are, you know, when, when, when people think of Miami and hip hop, your name comes up in that conversation. But you're not originally from Miami, are you? No, nah, and I was born in L.A. Yep, my roots are in L.A. I still got family in L.A. I would travel to L.A. damn near every year of my life um, to, to visit family. And, and my grandparents were out there and aunts and uncles and cousins. Yeah, so I'm originally from, from out there, but I was raised in Miami from, I think, I finally stayed here when I was like in sixth or seventh grade. What, what part of L.A.? Um, I lived in Southgate. Okay. It's like kind of like where Cypress Hill that's from, that area where Cypress mm -hmm. Hill's from. That's kind of like the area that I was in. How'd you wind up in Miami? So, I mean, long story short, um, so my parents are Cuban immigrants. They came after the, the revolution. And the way that the United States was doing with Cubans is kind of funny. They didn't want to concentrate all the Cubans in Miami. Mm -hmm. So they kind of try to disperse them. I mean, eventually it happened. Miami became pretty much Cuban, you know. Cuba, yes, it but, is. <laughs> but they were trying to disperse Cubans all around the country. And my, my parents, my mom ended up in, in California. And then my dad, he was here already because uh, he was in an orphanage. And then he went to Vietnam. He, he, was, he joined the Marines and he was in the war. And he was based in, in San Diego. So that's how they met. They met in California. And then, you know, long story short, again, my dad and, you know, just the war and things that happened and the relationship didn't work out. He had a lot of issues uh, stemming from the war and he broke up. They broke up and he moved to Miami in the heyday of the cocaine cowboy days. <laughs> so he was wilding out out here um, and they tried to work it out. So that's why we started coming. Like I came back and forth with to Miami maybe like five times before we finally stayed here. And, and that's, that's the story of how I got here. And what are you, about five, six years old around that time? Yeah, I was super young. I'm, yeah, five or six, definitely the first couple of times we came. And then whatever, sixth grade, what, 12 years old, 11 mm -hmm. years old when I finally stayed. So where, where did your love affair with hip hop come from? First, it's just loving music in general. Like I just grew up, just music just spoke to me, all kinds of music. Um, and then I just feel like just hip hop was just natural. It was just, it was just the soundtrack to my youth. And, and at first I didn't realize how, how much of a culture it was, you know, I'm just absorbing the music of it. So I'm, I have a mixtape that has all kinds of music, which includes hip hop. You know, I have like some Beastie Boys, Dougie Fresh, LL, you know, what, and locally MC Shy D and Two Life Crew and all that stuff. It isn't until junior high until NWA and Public Enemy are hitting the scene that it really spoke to me. Like, I felt like it, my personal opinion is hip hop really showed its power through those two groups. And, and, it, and like, I, I never, I was like, wow, this is, this is a powerful music. Correct. And then to find out about the culture in general, and then not just to find out about it, to understand that I'm living the culture already. You know, I was a B-boy, I'm doing graffiti, like, but I wasn't saying I'm hip hop. It's just, I was already living it because you're a kid, you don't know any better. And, and then, then from that point on, I was just like, what's dope about this music? And then, because I love music so much, I loved how music was a soundtrack to generations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and, I, and I realized this music is the sound, is, is the music to my generation. So you, you're telling me you were able to, to yeah. conceptualize that at that young age? At junior high, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, that's the way I was thinking, man. And, and as I got into high school, my, then I started to say, okay, I want to be, a, like, I really want to dive deep into this, into this music, into this culture. So, but I also wanted to see, like, what's going on locally. So mm -hmm. that became very important to me. So at first, I just wanted to be, the, like, rather than try to be a DJ or work in the industry, I just wanted to be a fan of the music and immerse myself as a fan and support it as a fan. So anything I could do, any shows, I went to all the first shows of, you know, like Biggie in Miami and Red Man and going to all these underground shows and clubs and parties and, and any, anything that I could do to, to, to just support the scene and be a part of the scene, that's what I was doing. And then locally, any artists that were doing it locally, that's what I was about because I really wanted Miami to have its voice in hip hop. Um, and I felt that that's where I could be that's when I started to say, okay, well, maybe I can't impact nationally, but maybe I could do something locally. And that's where that, that started coming into mind. 
Were you a good student? No. <laughs> Just that simple. Yeah, no, no. I was, I, yeah, I almost ended up in correctional schools and I had to, they kicked me out of one school and I was like, they wanted to send me to one of those, you know, like correctional schools, which are damn near like prisons for kids. Uh huh. And my mom had to go to the school board and like, she was like begging because my mom's raising me by herself. You know, shit was tough. So they were like, well, he'd have to, he, we can send him to this other school, but he has to join JROTC. You know, at that time though, I actually wanted to be in the military because my dad was a but Marine. Dad, yeah. We weren't, we didn't have a relationship, but that's kind of like my connection. I would, that's, I became like infatuated with like war movies and, and all this stuff in the military. And that was me trying to have a connection to my dad. So I was like, oh, I'm going to join the Marines anyways. So what's ROTC? Well, ROTC actually convinced me I didn't want to be in the military because <laughs> once I got in there, the hierarchy and saluting and push-ups and the fucking tossing the gun around, I was like, nah, this ain't what I, I just want to shoot somebody right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it got me out of that mindset. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.